So, uh, welcome to the interview today, Mr. Mr. Hicking Button. Uh, welcome. Uh, today we're just going to conduct a simple interview. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and you're just going to give me your answer to those questions. Uh, so, can you please tell me uh, why are you applying for this job? Ah. You want to make a lot of money? Ah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Uh, Hicking Button. You've been a great candidate today and we will just email you uh, if we think that you are perfect for this job. Okay, thank you. Isn't that how we feel a lot of the time as people who are being interviewed? You're trying to give your best answers to those questions and unfortunately you never end up getting the job that you wanted. Or you never even end up going past the first stage of recruitment to get that dream job of your choice. <laughs> now, I mean, we've all been there. I've had interviews like that. Uh, when I was less experienced, I went in and I didn't even hear a reply. Or I got rejected in the first 15 minutes of applying. Now this is all that happens to us and we just have to kind of go through and move on and learn from those experiences. But in today's video I want to I want to make an exception for you guys and I want to share some of my best tricks that I've learned throughout my career as a software developer to what I do and how I bag myself those top high-end interviews. Now you might be asking yourself why would we listen to someone like me? What do I have to offer than all the other types of videos which tell you how to run for an interview. Well, not only that I've applied for jobs like that and I managed to get a place at them, I have also been an interviewer for people for such a high stake position. And I know what I am looking for as an interviewer in those people. And I know what kind of mistakes those candidates made that I'm going to share with you guys today. Now here is what I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume that when you're applying for a position and you're applying for a position, let's say you're applying to be a React developer, I'm assuming that you know a little bit of React or at least you have some knowledge of React. I mean, there's absolutely no point applying for a position that you know nothing about because that's just a fact that you're going to get rejected. So you can't be surprised if that happens. We're going to be talking about scenarios where you're applying for a job and you have the skill sets and yet, for some reason, these companies are just not interested in you. So how can we make those companies interested? What can we do to make you successful and bagging that six-digit salary at the job of your dreams? So here is the first tip to make you feel confident when you're interviewing. So when a company says you need to know this and this and this and this and that, and this and that and that framework and this framework, and you're like, I don't know half of these things, don't panic. <laughs> Most of these companies have high requirements and they set their expectations probably at higher standards than what is required of you. Think about this. You're applying for a job where you will always constantly be learning, right? So if you know the skills to the point and you're perfect at everything that they're asking you to do, well, good for you, that's absolutely amazing and you shouldn't have any trouble going through the interview process. But it's not always about that. We don't always look for skill. One really important thing to remember is that we look for a person to be capable and wanting to learn the things that we throw at them. We look at the way you think. We don't necessarily care about you knowing this much syntax or being able to write this amount of code in a specific time. No, that, that, that's not important. We want to see a will to learn. We want to see you want to accomplish things and we want to see some ambition and skill set coming out of you which is not a skill set in a specific language that we require but a skill set in you being able to adjust and learn from the company and put those skills into practice. And that is something really important that a lot of people forget about. So to sum up, apply only for jobs that you actually have a skill set in and that require that skill set and then go into the interview with confidence knowing that you don't have to know 100% of everything that they required on the specification list and know that they're looking more for you being able to adapt and learn rather than you knowing everything like crazy. 
Now, tip number two that a lot of people forget about is making yourself visible. Now, why am I saying that visibility is so important? When you think about applying for a job, you think about, oh, I have to physically go onto that website and file an application. That's 50% of the market. The other 50% of the other market is recruiters finding you. It's how you present yourself online, how you present your portfolio, what you show online that you can offer and what kind of skill sets you have that you can offer. And then recruiters will come to you and ask you, hey, would you like to have a meeting? Your profile looks interesting. Let's call, let's discuss about your future opportunities. So make yourself visible on those specific mediums that have that purpose and functionality of displaying your portfolio. The main one is LinkedIn. I've been getting so many different propositions for LinkedIn that I could just never imagine. All you have to do is just tick that little box that you're open for new positions. And then if your portfolio is good enough, you'll have recruiters just spamming you with messages asking you if you want to work for all the highest tech firms in the world. And trust me, I know people that got a job for them. Every single one of you has that opportunity. Now there's other websites like AngelList and Hired where you can create an account, create your portfolio. And then I think on some of them, companies contact you and then you can very easily contact other companies. It's almost necessary for you to have those profiles to give yourself as much chance and possibility of exposure to those other companies that you want to apply for. Now on to point number three that I think is probably one of the most important points and it's your CV. Now I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding about what a CV is and what it offers and that it's just looked down on when you send it over and people don't care. It's actually very important, especially when I was interviewing, I found the CV extremely important and that's the only first bit of information I have about someone applying where I can say, oh, okay, this person does this and this person does that. And it gives me a lot of information about you. Is it true that people look at a CV for 30 seconds and they, they put it to the side? Yes, it's true. And why do they do that? Because they look at the CV and they just don't see anything that's interesting, which means that the CV hasn't been designed well. If you're giving me a page full of text or sometimes even two pages, or sometimes I've even gotten CVs that had six pages long, full of text of their experiences, where you might think that that's amazing because you're showcasing so much, but actually I'm very busy. I don't have time to read all of this. I want a one page bullet pointed clear CV saying you have this skill and this skill and this skill and you have this experience and you worked here. Here's the skills I know. Here's what uh, I can offer your company. This is why you should take me. Very, very important. Now, another tip on top of a CV, check it. Check your CV. So many people do not check their CV. Check it once, twice, three times, a hundred times. If you make a spelling mistake on your CV, to me that is not good enough. That means you're not accurate. You don't look through everything closely. Now, if a CV is something that's important to you because you're sending it and you don't put that much effort into making sure that it's perfect, how are you going to be working at my company making sure that what you're doing for me is perfect? Because I want perfect work from someone that I'm hiring. I mean, you know, nobody is always perfect, but I wanted their best efforts. Now, a CV is something that's technically very simple, but if you're making these mistakes on your CV, it doesn't give me first good impressions about you as a person who cares. So that's why I stress, and I cannot stress enough, check your CV two times, three times, four times, 10 times, as many times, give it to someone else, because sometimes you might not see these things. Make someone else check it before you submit it to those big companies. Now, if you'd like me to go for a video of how I designed my CV and how I included all the most important information on it and the structure of the CV and what's the best thing to attract the recruiter's attention, make sure you like this video and I might consider making another video about that. Now, point number four, learn about the job, learn about the company, learn about the insides and outs and everything on Wikipedia about that company and how it works. Even when you're going for that first initial stage with the recruiter, which is just like a 15 minute talk to learn more about you, it's always good to be prepared. And you never know what kind of relevance the person giving you that initial interview has within the company. Now, they want to know that you've put in the effort to understand the work ethics of the company, how it functions inside, what kind of products it works on, what kind of technology it uses. All of those questions are important. It shows that you are interested in the company that you're applying for and you suddenly become a very interesting candidate and you become of value to that company who wants to take you. So do your background research, make sure you know everything, whatever it takes, read articles, read opinions, and just make sure that you don't come to your interview or to your phone call not knowing what the company does at all. Now on to point number five, and you might be wondering why I'm laughing. 
Well, I'm laughing because point number five is don't bullshit in your interview. Oh my goodness, I've had this so many times where I was interviewing someone, unfortunately, and they came to apply for a specific job role and I was asking them questions on that job role, which clearly I know very well what I'm asking them. And I know that technology or tech stack, if it's a technical interview, and they just would tell me absolute nonsense. And at that point, when you know that someone is coming in without any knowledge of what they're going to be doing, how do they become a worthy candidate to you as an interviewer? Well, they don't. And this kind of tracks back to point one where I said, have the basic knowledge of something that you're applying for. There's no point in just sending out CVs like crazy, thinking that you might suddenly get a response. Yes, you might put stuff on your CV and it might sound interesting, and then me as a recruiter might give you a call and be like, hey, let's discuss about your skills, and then you can't tell me anything. That's you wasting your time. I can't have you come in and not be able to answer any questions because as soon as I ask you a basic question about the technology and you cannot give me an answer to it, the interview in my head is instantly over. So make sure, make sure, make sure to learn stuff. Now, if it comes to the point where you haven't learned stuff and the question comes up that you might not know, then here is my number one best freaking tip you can ever have. Never answer the question pretending that you know. The best thing to do in that scenario is say, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I think this is the answer and give your answer. That shows me a very important skill set that not many people have. And it shows me a skill set where you are telling me, well, I don't know, but I'm willing to give it my best shot. And in the same way, that will apply onto your future work. And that will tell me, well, this person doesn't know, but they're going to learn. And they're going to become good at it because everyone can become good at something. Everyone in that industry who has the passion to learn will become very good at something with time. And the company will give you that time to learn. If there's something new, they will give you the resources and courses and time to learn everything that you need. But just make sure to try. Make sure to have that attitude that you always want to achieve more and show them that you want to try. And that's basically it. That's basically all the things you need to know. If you apply all those things, if you make sure that you're perfect in all those areas and you follow all these steps, then I can guarantee you that a lot of companies will be really interested in your work. Now, as always, if you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, make sure you subscribe down below. Let me know if you had any interview processes and how it went and let me know what kind of things you learned to improve the process and what kind of things you started noticing. And make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like the kind of content that I release. Now I am moving out of my uni accommodation, which is this room right now and moving back home and starting to build my office. and. I'll be doing all videos around that and uh, surely it should be much more interesting for you guys than me just constantly being at my desk. But as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Stuff like you. Yep, no. Like you. Not my type. God, no. Ah, a web developer with 28 years experience, age 16. Yeah, that, that, that could be right. Ah! Nah. <laughs>